Hey everybody, I'm a little winded up here south of Sly Park, trying to check out some new roads today. And uh, everything went good until I uh, went down this road and got my tiger stuck. So this is probably the first time that I've used a Z-drag system uh, in, in the wild, so to speak. So I thought I'd take a break while I'm catching my breath and kind of go over what a Z-drag system can do for you. It's uh, not always easy, but you know, I'm out here by myself, so I gotta do something to get out of here, right? So what we have here is an anchor point. I went to a tree down low, carabiner to my static line. One of the things that's important, uh, you'll notice immediately if you make this mistake, luckily I didn't, but make sure you get static line. You don't want any dynamic uh, rope or webbing or anything in your system. Down here we have a mechanical Prusix, which ties on to the anchor line, and you can move this up or back as you need to, okay? Because you will have to adjust it as you make progress. So what you do is you gotta have this loop, it has some room in it. So you go from your mechanical Prusix to a pulley, okay? One line of your pulley goes to the spot you're actually gonna be pulling on, as you saw me doing in the earlier portion of the video. The other side of this pulley goes down to another mechanical Prusix. I'll explain why. Because as you do make progress and you start to get some, some closure in the distance between your motorcycle and the tree, you don't want this, this main line to come loose. So every time you adjust your grip to pull on this, you don't want to lose any of the progress you've made here. So this is called a progress capture pulley or Prusix. Now you can use actual rope Prusix and uh, called Prusix minding pulleys, but I decided to go with progress capture pulley. This one's called a rock and lock or roll and lock by CT, CT climbing technology. Um, these also serve a good purpose for heavyweight lifting and can also operate as just a single pulley because you can unlock the teeth and hold them back and then it just operates as a pulley. So then getting down here, connect with another piece of webbing down to the uh, foot peg mount, which is typically where you would tow a motorcycle from. And so that's why I chose that as an anchor point. So it should be good and solid. This would definitely go a lot faster if I had a friend. Unfortunately, he went skiing today. I kind of wished I'd gone with him at this point. This is a very tiring uh, thing to do to try to make progress up this hill that's full of snow. So hopefully I can just get it up to that flat spot and be able to uh, ride it out of here at that point. All right, if you guys have any questions about a Z-drag system, uh, it's basically just a, a system of pulleys that gives you mechanical advantage. And uh, if you don't have one in your riding group and you're out here on these trails, you should probably consider putting one together because I've, as a friend of mine has found out, tow trucks will not come get you down here. It can be a very expensive, expensive endeavor, not just a get a truck down here, but you gotta hike out of here too. And that's not the easiest thing to do because no cell service. And if you don't have a spot system or a messaging GPS system, like I do, I use Garmin inReach, but uh, that's a different video. So wish me luck. Hopefully I'll get out of here before dark. See you later. One of the other things, as you make progress, you'll see that these pulleys come together. Okay, so once you've gotten them to the point where your pulleys are kind of out of room to come together as you're pulling, you just need to readjust it. So this is all the slack that you've pulled out of the system and to adjust it and put it right back in, 
all you got to do with this type of pulley is just grab the carabiner and slide this thing all the way up as far as you feel like you need to go it'll go all the way to the end if you let it but you want to make sure that you leave enough lead line that you can still reach it from uh, the point that you're actually operating the system so as you see once you slip this forward it automatically locks and then you go back to your workstation as you might call it and now you've got that that distance between the pulleys again you can start to uh, to pull the slack out of the system and continue making progress pulling your big stuck tiger on snow up out of the uh, the canyon which hopefully to that flat spot right there and I can drive the rest of the way so on to the next all right so now we're gonna go into resetting the anchor uh, this is a point where you've kind of used up most of the room between your anchor point and your load uh, things start to get very difficult to pull on the slack here because your angles start changing so what you'll need to do is loosen the grip on your Prusix. Uh, this is your progress capture side. So you'll have to tilt the bike or push it forward a little bit just to take some of the tension off of your load line. And then with this, you unlock. And then if you lift up on these little points right here, you can actually lock this open. Although it's very cumbersome to do with one hand got it all right so now this is open so now if you were to use it in a different situation and you just wanted a pulley that's that's what you would use it with it unlocked for now we're going to be resetting the anchors which means all the different distances in our lines are going to change so what we'll need to do is open up both of our mechanical prusiks and unlock them and then we're going to go up here we're going to take our anchor off so for this one I just got a couple of loop ends on a piece of webbing and that's what I tie around my anchor point okay and then the the uh, this is just tied in this carabiner so then this part we'll just slip out of there and then we can go find another tree So we'll go up here, we'll find a little bit more distance. We'll hook this back up and then we'll pull this, the, the uh, carabiner here for the anchor point. We'll just pull it forward and all the lines that need to change back here between our pulleys and our prusiks, they'll change automatically. The only thing we wanna be mindful of is that our uh, slack line that we pull on, we wanna make sure that we can still reach the, uh, the working portion working area whoever's going to be pulling it in this case it's me so i have to be right next to the bike so you have to make sure that your uh, slack line can still reach there otherwise you'll uh you'll have to find a closer anchor point so as we're looking for our anchor point what we can do is just grab our carabiner for our anchor and just since all that stuff's unlocked we're just going to pull it okay don't worry about the rest of that and this will give you an idea of how much distance you're gonna need. So just pay attention to the slack line and make sure you don't pull it all the way through. That's pretty close to the back tire. So I wanna have some to play with. Um, so now you have an idea of the distance uh, for your anchor. And then you can kind of look around where this is at and find the best anchor point. Right there, I see a very large tree. I've been pulling on the base of really small ones, which has worked. But uh, I'll take a big tree anytime I can get it. So we're gonna hook this back up and keep going. Right here is my goal. And then I'm gonna try to ride this thing out of here. So we'll see if uh, all this work will pay off or I'm gonna have to keep Z-dragging this thing all the way up the hill. We'll see, I hope that's not the case. All right, we got our anchor hooked up. Big tree, that is absolutely not going anywhere. And we're going to take all that slack and take it back to our system here. I'm going to grab a hold of the forward piece and we're going to start pulling some of the slack out of this. So. Get all 
the slack out. Okay, so now see we've got all our slack out of the system. Now we're gonna start locking these things up. So first thing you want to undo is engage your progress capture pulley. Okay, that's gonna keep your load line from moving. And take your slack line. I'm gonna run that up. And remember to pay attention to where your slack line is so you have some room to work. Then unlock this and re-engage it. As I said, this is much easier if you have two hands, but I gotta hold the camera somehow. All right. Then we're back at it. So now you see I've, uh, I've actually got some more to play with. So I may take some more, uh, put some more line in those pulleys. But now that my anchor is further away, I've, I've got some more distance to cover. So there we go. Start working some more. All right, everybody. So this is where I started. Right here is where my back tire was. There's my bike. I paced this off. It's about 22 paces, which for me is about three feet per, which takes us pretty close to, what is that, 70 feet? Give or take. So now we're up here at a small little flat spot. Obviously somebody turned around uh, before me. Hopefully I'll have at least as much or better success getting out of here the rest of the way up without having to do the z drag system again because there's probably another 100 yards to go so uh, hopefully this is it hope you guys enjoyed seeing the z drag system As you can see i got pretty close to using every bit of it on that last pull worked really good I'm very happy with this system it's uh, modular, you can use it for other stuff. CT, climbing technology, they make equipment for rescue. And the load ratings are probably higher than any other device I've seen uh, that's similar in size and weight. So not a bad purchase. Uh, you can use whatever pull you want. This one's a uh, GM climbing. I think I got all of this stuff on Amazon except for the carabiners actually I had those but anyway hope you enjoyed it it did work it is work but I tell you it would have taken a lot longer and in all honesty I'm not sure I would have made it out of here without having to go get a truck and a tow cable so there it is if you have any questions comment down below as always I'll try to read and answer those as best I can. Uh, you can also check out my Instagram page where I post, you know, photos and stuff a little bit more often. And uh, we'll have some other stuff on there. I got this uh, GPS mount by Evotech, by the way. Some of you guys might have noticed I had a little bit more screen action going on up there. But uh, I love that thing. Puts the GPS right where you want it. Replaces the uh, windshield adjustment bar. Your windshield is still fully adjustable, but uh, as you can kind of see, it just it puts it in the right spot. So maybe I'll have a review on that later. Uh, same with the Garmin Zumo XT, which is also new for me. All right, guys, wish me luck. Talk to you later. Well, we made it about 80 paces. So for my pace count, 80 times 3 is, I'm no mathematician, but probably about 240 feet, give or take. And I think if I can just get to that bare spot, I'll be okay. But I did hit some rather slick ice right here, so I'm going to have to hook my system up again and uh, try to go a little bit further. There is another flat spot up there, so worst case scenario is... Just a little bit further to that flat spot and then get a running start and just stay on it until I hopefully get to the top and get back to some some regular roads that are not covered in snow. So 
What? Hey, that's what adventure is all about, right? If you don't want adventure, just stay on the street. All right, something we didn't uh, expect was to be having to pull out a Z-drag system. Uh, we'll get into that, how it works, where the where the Prusix go. I use mechanical Prusix, but uh, first you got to hook this thing up. So the way I've been doing it today, uh, and this is the first time I've ever had to do this, but uh, I know that when you use a toe strap, you typically wrap it around the meaty portion of the peg. And so if I can do that here, one-handed, I'll show everybody how to get this Z-drag system started. And if you just overlay the webbing over itself and give it a few good tight wraps, um, it will hold on to itself. It's sort of like a timber hitch. If you don't know what a timber hitch is, you were probably not a Boy Scout. Of course, neither was I. I had to look it up. But it is one of those useful knots you can use when you're lashing things together for making bushcraft shelters. Anyway, that is just a side note. Here we go, got our webbing on nice and tight. About three, maybe four wraps. And then you get into setting up your pulleys to your anchor point, which we're gonna go up there and find an anchor point. All right, so we started by wrapping the, uh, the load strap, which I use a piece of uh, one inch webbing, flat webbing, and uh, just wrap it around the, the base of the foot peg like you're gonna tow it. Stretch out your Z-drag system, see how far you can go, and then find a nearby anchor point. Uh, I think we're gonna go to the base of this little bush looking thing. Don't know what that is. I'm not a, not really keen on different plants, but it looks like the base of it has enough meat to give me a good anchor point. So we'll hook up to that and then we'll start our Z-drag rescue system to Pull that bike into a dry spot so we can hopefully take off. All right, I did it. We're back on a dirt road. You see that road behind me? That's where I came in. And uh, there wasn't really any snow up there. It was just all this snow that once I got around this turn, it just uh, descended down in the canyon and got extremely slippery and just I don't have uh, any studs on my tires or knobbies or anything like that. Uh, I'm still happy with the performance of my tires. Uh, Dunlop Trail Max Missions, they're, uh, they're amazing. Obviously not the best thing for snow, right? But uh, in all honesty, that wasn't the road I was supposed to be on anyway. No, the road I was supposed to be on is down that way. And then it turns. So I actually had turned too soon. Uh, my mistake, but I really kind of doubt that uh, the conditions were going to be any better up here. So, uh, man, I'll have to tie this all together as best I can. Uh, I'm going to head home, crack open some beers, uh, cook some chili, <laughs> something, something warm. Uh, this has been a great ride. It's been a good adventure. Uh, I've been stuck out here for about two hours, I guess, maybe a little under, uh, trying to hook up the Z-drag system to get my bike up this canyon. Um, I'm also not the most experienced off-road rider, so uh, it's another reason I carry systems like that. Uh, a better rider might have just been able to, you know, throttle out and, and just push through it. Uh, I don't have that experience. So I try to build redundancies in my system, and hopefully you guys enjoy watching this. I mean, if nothing else, it's entertaining to see some some old guy yank a uh, motorcycle uphill through the snow by himself. Uh, once again, uh, I don't, I'm not like a big video guy or anything, but uh, if you did like this, I am going to be trying to post more. Same with uh, additional maintenance videos for the Triumph Tiger as I learn more about it. And uh, yeah, if you want to check out my Instagram page, I usually post photos and stuff there. Blue ADV. Pretty easy to find. And uh, all right, you guys have a great day and uh, enjoy your riding. Keep that shiny side up and if you're gonna get down here in the muck, be prepared, all right? That goes for exercise too. 
because uh, this uh, this will kick your butt. It is not easy. All right, see you later.